Hey there, and welcome. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain on something that's quietly saving lives every single day. We're talking about the hidden language of healthcare, the science that turns a sea of numbers into real, life-saving action. I mean, think about it. How do we really know if a new vaccine is doing its job? Or if infection rates are actually going up or down in your community? These are huge questions, right? Lives are on the line. And the answers, well, they aren't just guesses. They're hidden in data. But here's the thing. Raw data on its own just looks like this. It's a total jumble of numbers. It's just noise, really. These figures don't tell us a thing. So to turn all this chaos into actual knowledge, we need a special kind of translator. And that gets us to the heart of the challenge we're facing. We are absolutely surrounded by health data, from hospital charts to huge clinical trials. It's a tidal wave of information. So that's the big problem, isn't it? We're practically drowning in data, but just having data isn't the same as understanding what it means. So how do we build that bridge from just information to actual insight? You know, the kind of insight that leads to making smarter decisions that can save lives. Well, this is where the hero of our story comes in. There's an entire field that's designed to speak this language of numbers and tell us what it's all trying to say. And that hero is biostatistics. You can kind of think of it like the grammar for medical science. It's the set of rules and tools that lets us collect data the right way, analyze it properly, and most importantly, interpret what it all means. It's the magic that turns that mess of numbers we saw into clear, confident conclusions. So what's really cool is that biostatistics basically does two main jobs. First, it helps us make sense of the data we're looking at right now. And second, it lets us make really smart predictions about the data we don't have, about the bigger picture. Let's break that down, starting with the first one. All right, so job number one, describing what we see. This is all about taking the information we have in front of us and just getting it organized. This side of things is called descriptive statistics, and its name says it all. Its only goal is to describe and summarize the data you have. It's not trying to predict anything or make some huge statement about the world. It's just trying to paint an honest, clear picture of what you found. Okay, let's make this super simple. Imagine you're a nurse and you've got the birth weights of 10 new babies. Right now, it's just a random looking list of numbers. It's pretty hard to spot any kind of pattern in there, right? Yeah, we can definitely do better. So the very first thing we could do is find a typical value. We just calculate the average or the mean and bam, we get 3.05 kilograms. Instantly, that one single number gives you a much better feel for the whole group than that long list ever could. That's the power of a simple summary. But we can even go a step further. We can organize those weights into a simple table like this. And now, look at that. You can see at a glance that the babies are split right down the middle, five in the lower weight range and five in the upper range. We just turned a confusing list into a super clear summary. That, right there, is descriptive statistics in action. Okay, so describing the data we have is super important. But what if we want to know about all the people we haven't measured? Well, that brings us to the other really powerful side of biostatistics. And that's the job of inferential statistics. This is where things get really interesting. It's where we take a small, manageable group, we call that a sample, and we use it to make this intelligent leap to infer what's true for an entire population. Now, it's a powerful leap, but you have to be careful. If your sample isn't a good representation, your conclusions could be way off. But when it's done right, it honestly feels a little like magic. Seriously, think about this for a second. We can't test a promising new drug on every single person on the planet. That's just impossible. So what do we do? We test it on a smaller group, maybe a few hundred or a few thousand people. And then, inferential statistics gives us the mathematical tools to look at those results and predict whether the drug will be safe and effective for everyone. This is literally how medical breakthroughs happen. So let's put it all together. Here's the key difference. Descriptive statistics just describes the group you actually studied, giving you things like averages, charts, and percentages. Inferential statistics takes that information and makes an educated guess about the giant group you didn't study. It uses special tools like p-values to tell us how confident we can be that our findings are real and not just some random fluke. They're two different jobs, but they work hand in hand. Okay, so we've got these incredible tools to describe and predict, but let's get to the bottom line. So what? How does all this math and theory actually translate into saving people's lives? Well, the truth is, biostatistics is the invisible backbone of just about every health field you can think of. A midwife uses it to understand risks by looking at birth weights. 
a public health expert uses it to track a pandemic, a pharmacist uses it to prove a new drug actually works. It is everywhere, working silently in the background, guiding the critical decisions that affect all of our health. At the end of the day, it's not really about the numbers themselves. It's about what they empower us to do. All the math, all the charts, it's all there for one reason, to make sure the huge decisions we make in medicine are based on solid evidence, not just on a hunch or on how we've always done it. And that's why this is so incredibly important. From the simplest health campaign all the way to the most complicated clinical trials, biostatistics is the bedrock. It's the framework that lets us learn from the past, improve in the present, and build a healthier future. It is truly a foundational science. So, I'll leave you with this final thought. We started out with just a jumble of random numbers, and we've seen how biostatistics can transform that noise into powerful truths. So what really is the difference between a number and the truth? Well, it's having the right tools to ask the right questions and to really, truly understand the answer. Thanks so much for joining me.